of the YouTube, I am back! First of all, I would like to thank you all for the most epic welcome to the channel, which if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you should probably go and uh, check it out here. Go on, I'll wait. I'm so tired, poor girl. Oh, you're back. <laughs> Okay. Last time we went on a journey to the Far East. Today we're going on a journey through time. Pun very much intended. Trust me, you'll know what I mean later. We're going to be looking at modern prog baselines you should know, but probably and hopefully don't. What is that? Define the term modern. Interesting. Easy! Anything 1996 and up. I hear that's when the cool kids are born anyway. One last thing before we move on. Remember, these are the forgotten bass lines, and while some of you might know the lines, in my opinion, they didn't get enough love. So don't go into this expecting Tool, Dream Theater, Rush, that's something for a different video. Plus, I know you all know those lines like the back of your hands. All right, enough of the blab, let's get playing. <laughs> listen to a song, hear the bass line, get super excited and announce to the world, I shall play that bass line, peasants! And then proceed to try and learn that song and absolutely regret that statement. Well, that's what happened to me with Sea of Lies by Symphony X. Now, you might have noticed this already, but Thomas Miller, who plays bass on this track, tuned the entire bass down a whole step. So, G to F, D to C, A to G, E to D, and because I'm playing a five string today and I didn't want to hurt myself in my confusion, I tuned my B just in case down to an A. Okay, let's slow this down. We're gonna start open G because we've tuned the bass down, octave G to F, and the F we're actually gonna pull off, so that'll sound like this. The next pull off is almost the same thing from the A flat to the F. Let's put it in context. Next, we're gonna tackle this really hip 16th note line. A flat, C, B, C, down to the F, A flat, G, A flat. Slowly. We return to the pull off line. Play with its motive and take it down a whole step, F to E flat. And we round it off with two fat quarter notes on D flat. Now let's put it all together and take it slow. Okay, we've got the riff down. Now we gotta make sure that we can double time the low and open G because he's just running all over that on the third and fourth repeat. this, it's not really the configuration of notes that'll trip you up, but rather the speed. Let me show you how I tackled this. The first thing I'll usually do is break the song up into sections, like we just did. That way I can learn it phrase by phrase and really take my time with it. Then when I'm slowly getting a hang of it, I'm gonna make sure that I'm playing to time. The biggest mistake you could make is to figure out what BPM the song is in and just try and play it with a track, especially a track like this. It's so fast. So what I'll do is I'll play to a metronome really slow. And if it's not working, I'll slow it down some more. And if it's still not working, I'll slow it down even more. Now when I found a tempo that works for me, I'll just loop it over and over and over again until I feel really, really comfortable. Then we up the metronome gradually, 5 BPM at a time. In today's day and age, you no longer need to carry one of those like metronomes with you or the big thing that goes tick, tick, tick. You don't need that. As long as you've got access to a computer or a smartphone, you can just download the SBL Groove Trainer app or head on over to scottsplacelessons.com. Free metronome and tuner. Just a year later, in 1997, Swedish prog metal band Pain of Salvation brought us one of the funkiest licks to have ever funked. There's just one slight issue with it, but I will happily ignore it. Blasphemous move 
move that they pulled on this song? The intro slap line is played on a guitar. Us bassists get one thing that we get to call our own, slap bass, and these guitarists just go and slap a guitar. What the hell? All right, as evil as it is, it's still hella funky, so we're just gonna go ahead and learn it anyway. First things first, let's remember to tune up the bass. Now, bass only technically enters when we get to the low. I'm not gonna stand here and let the guitar take all the glory, so we're gonna learn it an octave higher as well. So the riff's mostly in four, which I know, it's a prog video. Sharon, how dare you? Where are all the saucy timing signatures? We'll get there, we're uh, building our way up. All right, let's take it from the top. Double slap on E, D to E, pull off. Same thing, double slap on E, D flat to D, pull off. Then to A, D flat, E flat, I know, spicy. Back to A, and we're actually gonna wiggle it a little bit. Now in between the riffs, we got some fills. Did you notice a sneaky bar of three in there? Let's take a knock of lower. Next up, fast forwarding five years, but staying in Sweden, the dreadfully underrated Karma Conic released their album Entering the Spectra, and thus, Revealing to us what music would have sounded like had Eminem decided to headbang to prog instead of rap. Gentlemen, and the seven ladies in the house, may I present to you, Cyberdust from Mars. Nothing more, nothing left to say In the sky Cyberdust from Mars that backbeat. First we've got the longest line ever, but it's forgiven because it goes over the bar line. Oh, uh, there's nothing better than an over the bar line riff. Hmm. When does this line end? Here it comes. No. Here. And kidding! Now again, the line itself, it's not incredibly hard, there's a lot of weird shifting of positions and stuff going on, so it keeps you on your toes. Within that very, very long line, we've got two key sections that keep coming back. Key section number one, which is actually the one it starts off with. And key section number two. Those are the two sections that are surrounding our backbeat and Eminem groove. Oh, and if this is going a little bit too fast, don't worry. As per usual, we've got our trusty workbook in the description below. Please do yourself a favor and go and listen to Karma Conic. Actually, let me do you one better. I will challenge you. Go and listen to the song Do You Tango, go to 445, listen to the absolute insane bass solo by Jonas Reingold, and then go to 628, and in the comments below, tell me how you count it. We have reached our final song in 4-4. Not final song, I'm not done with you yet. Just. Four, four, by the queen bee herself, Halo. Gonna shut you out. It was in 4-4, but let's try that again. Halo by the UK's very own Porcupine Tree. 
The name of the game on this song is Muting. So let's tackle the backbone of this riff. It's this really hip line in E with some really whack notes. Let's check it out. The bass line keeps coming back to that one riff, and then in between we've got these little fills that keep happening. So let's check those out. Fill number one. Slide. Fill number two. Let it ring, but don't slide it. Fill number three is the same thing as fill number one. And then fill number four is as follows. Let's put it all together. We're going to start challenging our counting skills on this next one because we're going to be going back and forth between sixes and sevens. The track was released in 2009 by the band Exevious, and I'm kind of trying to avoid saying the title here because I don't know whether it's pronounced ripple of a tear, ripple of a tear, ripple of a tear. Why are we leaning into the awkward silence? Just cut to the playthrough. Gorgeous sound of a fretless. You know, Ian sometimes changes basses halfway through. I think I'm gonna do the same. Oh, right, I sold my fretless. One might even call me fretlessless. Frets won't stop me. Onwards. A whole lot of slides and hammer-ons. Let's figure out where they are. Low E to F, and then up to the octave. Really snappy. Like, as snappy as you can go. And then we're gonna slide it. Just once. Slide. That's the whole line besides a couple of embellishments. Let's take the whole thing slowly. know this band until a friend actually recommended them to me for this video. Do you know them? And do you know anyone else that I might want to listen to for part two? Do you remember this guy? China, 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 China now, China, China, you know. I hear he's running for president again in 2024. <laughs> Obviously I meant the bassist. That, my friends, is Iggy Jackson Cohen, who also happens to be the bassist on our next track, Misguided, by Distorted Harmony off of their 2014 record, Chain Reaction. is actually going to be in 7. By most of it I mean there's a quick dip into a 4-4 four, four, and then in, back into a different 7 and then it loops. Big 7. Four, 4 Small 7. Big 7. Four, 4 numbers are confusing you, remember, you've got a workbook you can fall back on. 
Next up is State of Flux by the supergroup Nova Collective. Is it just me or does this track have some serious Beirut Steps Ahead vibes? So fun. <laughs> Such a smooth line and it's an 11. 11. Fun fact about that actually. If it doesn't feel like a normal 11 to you, you're on to something. Usually when we hear an 11 in fusion-esque style songs, we'll hear it with groupings of 443. This song, however, decided to go with something that we see more often than not in traditional styles of music. They go with groupings of 434. Let me play it slowly so you can follow along and pay attention to the groupings. <laughs> And last but definitely not least, we'll tackle a song that I have a very complicated relationship with. Up until deciding to make this video, this song was actually, hands down, my favorite song on the album. Now, however, after trying to learn just a mere eight bars of this tune, it's uh, definitely plummeted to the bottom of that list. Not because it's a bad song, on the contrary, it's an incredible song, but really more because every time I hear it now, I experience a severe amount of PTSD. Transcribing a song in 1716 is no easy task to begin with, but then, Having a guy Bernfeld playing every single 16th note at 140 beats per minute, well, what could be worse? Well, let me tell you what could be worse. Succeeding at transcribing the tune and then painstakingly making your way from 65 all the way up to 140 BPM. And then once you reach the top, you celebrate it by playing it with the actual track for the first time which is also when you realize that you accidentally transcribed an additional 16th note and you have to go all the way back to the beginning and redo the entire process, except this time you're working against your own muscle memory. The things I do for you, YouTube. So after all of this, please remember to grab your free workbook down in the description with the correct transcription of Stemati by Hagel. The struggle was, and quite frankly still is, very real. So uh, please, please, join me in my struggles. The original motive that this whole line is based on is this. Every repeat after that is some variation of this, and it just keeps getting more and more complicated. Okay, let's do the whole thing slowly, and by slowly I mean something that a human brain can actually keep up with. Original motive. Second variation. Third variation. Fourth variation. actually wrote this, you better hope I never find out where you live. Okay, we've reached the bottom of my modern slash cool people prog baselines you should know list, but before you go somewhere, I have a request, so please help me out. We can't just leave it at modern prog baselines, I mean there's gotta be like a gazillion pre-1996 prog lines that we can dig into, right? So please, in the comments below, spill the beans because right now this is the only one I can think of. You can go now. It's really fun hanging out. I'll catch you next time.